My name is Matt Reiner. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company here in Atlanta called Wella, where we are focused on trying to change the way that financial advice is delivered to individuals. Uh, our focus is on rethinking the approach that has been kind of deemed the stodgy industry of financial advice and give it a new flair and give it more relevancy to individuals in their personal situation. Uh, and when I'm, we're excited to really work with Cool Leaf here because we, we believe in their mission uh, and, and how they're helping um, employees and engagement. And I think that uh, you know, the financial wellness aspect is a really uh, hot aspect right now. And it's something that I think is really valuable along with just health and, uh, and other aspects of, of employee engagement. So we're really excited to be partnering with them. So when they came to us and asked us on, on a topic, this is one that we've been talking to a lot of people about, we've been speaking at, at other conferences about, is ways to create a budget that you can actually stick with. The, the budgeting process is a process that is um, really antiquated in our minds. We, um, we believe that there is the old way of just you know, creating an Excel spreadsheet you, know, you create it at the beginning of the, at the year and then you, you, you have to update it every month to see where you're going and you hope that your budget doesn't have to change to meet all of your goals. So there's really no fluidness with regards to your budget. And so when we went to the drawing table, we said, how can we make a budget that's relevant and that helps people understand how today's actions impact their future, their future goals that may be hard to wrap their head around. It may be a goal that's five years away, like retirement or a kid's college or a new house, all the way up to 30 or 35 years down the road. Uh, how do we wrap our heads around those goals with uh, and, and understand the impact that today's spending decisions uh, have on those, as opposed to just saying, don't spend here, don't spend there, and, and that's it. So we wanted to really recreate that, and that's what I wanted to talk about and give you guys the tools uh, to be able to go through what we've been able to develop, which is called the daily spend limit. It's Think of it as Weight Watchers for financial advice, basically. Weight Watchers, I thought, was a great uh, tool in the sense that it helps people become more aware of their, 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 their eating habits and to help them make better eating decisions, ultimately put themselves in a better uh, weight situation in the future. With daily spend limit and the way that we focus on that budgeting aspect, we, we believe that it helps individuals uh, become more aware of their financial decisions, create better financial behaviors to ultimately put themselves in a better financial position in the future. So how does the how does daily spend limit work? Well, to create a budget that you, we can actually stick to, that we believe that there's really only three steps. You don't need a whole Excel spreadsheet. You don't need, um, you know, you know, the, the, the track every single necessarily dollar. There's a lot of software out there that can help, but there's really just three simple things that you can do to at least get started. And then on an ongoing basis, you can use some of these tools to help you stay true to that methodology. Uh, the three steps really include cash flow, monthly needs, and necessary savings. So the cash flow aspect is we need to determine how much we are receiving every month. Not how much we think we are receiving every month, but actually how much are we having go into our bank account every single month? That's the first step. I, we see a lot of people come in uh, and, and they talk to, they talk about they, uh, how much they think they have in their accounts, but they, or how much they think they're making, but they never truly understand exactly how much they're making because they always get to the end of the month and say, I thought I had enough, but they didn't. So the first step, Identify what you are actually having hit your account from a household every single month in income. The next step is what are your monthly needs? What are the recurring monthly expenses that you need to live? This doesn't mean the ones that you want to have, but actually what it is that you need to live. So think about your mortgage or your rent, utilities, your phone, your internet, uh, your car, your insurance. Those are the types of categories uh, groceries, food, that type of stuff. Those are the categories that we know we need uh, to, to live on. So we first want to identify those particular categories. And then we will want to identify uh, what we need to spend on those every single month to meet our needs. So that we can look at over a three or six month period, see what it was that we spent on each of those categories. And then that determines what our monthly needs are. And then the last question is, is that we have to set some goals. We have to understand what it is that we need to save for, we need to strive for within our daily budget to save for every month in order to meet different financial goals that we have. Some of the core goals that we always look at with individuals is always, uh, you know, are we cash flow positive first and foremost? 
How are we with credit card debt? Do we have credit card debt that we need to get out of? How much should we be paying towards that credit card debt in order to get out of that as soon as possible? The third is emergency reserve. How much do we have as a safety net? If we need liquidity right away, how much do we have to access within our savings accounts for an emergency? And then the fourth core goal really is retirement. We want to all retire. And so how much do we need in retirement savings? And then how much do we need to save in order to get there over the period of time that we allot? So understanding what it is that we need to save every month helps us to create a budget. Some people say, well, what does that mean for us on a budget? Well, you should always create and implement savings into your budget because too often people just implement spending and that allows for them to get to the month at, at the end of the month and not have enough for actual savings uh, for their financial goals. So that's why we like to lump it in as one of the major steps of budgeting. So you accumulate all of this and then you identify what your daily spend limit is. Your cash flow, your monthly needs, how much you're saving, you add your monthly needs and your necessary savings together and you want to make sure that that does not exceed your cash flow. And whatever that number allows for, that's a simple way of determining what you can spend on a daily basis. You take that monthly number and you divide it by however ever days there are in a month and that allows for you to have a simple daily spend limit. So the daily spend limit is what I was mentioning before, the equivalent of your um, Weight Watchers for your financial advice. It's broken down, just like we've been talking, it's broken down into your life needs. So what is it that you need to live every single day, which means we need a roof over our head, we need food in our pantry, and we need to be insured. And so that allows for you to have all those necessary elements in your life and then it breaks down into fun your dsl fun as we call it which is the things that we like that, that we like the discretionary spending entertainment travel clothing and so uh the the three steps that we just previously talked about allow for us to understand what it is for a dsl life to be able to live by on every single uh every single month and then whatever is left over is what we can splurge on and not feel guilty about it so the daily spend limit allows for us to have one number that we have to live by every single day. Whether it's $100 or $150 or $200 a day, it tells us what we can spend. Not what we can't spend, but rather what we can spend every day and know that we're living the right way and we're gonna be able to continue to save towards our future goals and meet our current monthly spending needs. So that's where the daily spend limit comes into. It's a focus of figuring out what is it that we can spend as opposed to not be able to spend. And you can see your breakdown here of DSL life is your mortgage, your car payment, your cell phone, etc. cetera. Um, and you wanna be able to look at it and track it every day. Some days we're gonna be over, some days we're gonna be below, but we wanna make sure that we average out and we stay true to that daily spend number. The daily spend number just makes us become, again, more aware. It helps us understand how buying that coffee at Starbucks or buying you know, that extra slice of uh, a pizza over for lunch, how that impacts a longer term goal that we never really had an impact for. When we built out budgets originally, it was saying that we thought that this was the way that it was going to lead us to our future financial goals, but we really never had a solution or an idea behind what does you know, meeting that budget mean for my goals? How does it change as my, as my life changes, as my salary changes, as my expenses change, whether it's a kid or it's a new house or it's a one-time expense? How does all of that impact my financial situation? And that's what, if you calculate your own individual daily spend limit, that allows you to have that understanding going forward. Uh, so some of the ways that, that daily spend, if you are able to calculate your own daily spend limit, can improve your financial life and how it improves the whole budgeting process is one, it eliminates wasted time. No more having to sit tr through you know, uh, the end of the month and, and, and aggregate all of your information in and then run your budget and see how you did. You now have a quicker, clearer, uh, immediate understanding of how your spending decisions are impacting your budget. You no more having to wait till the end of the month. You get that impact and that view into your budget immediately, right away. Uh, number two, it, it helps you have a clear roadmap to your personal financial goals. So it helps you understand how your budget now aligns with your financial goals, which back with budgeting was that we were just budgeting to be able to save money, but we didn't really understand how it aligned with 
meeting our goals, when we would be able to retire, when we would have our emergency reserve built up, or when credit card debt would be able to be paid off. If you break down your budget into a daily limit like this, and you better understand and you include your monthly needs along with what you need to save to meet your, your future goals, now you have a better understanding of, of a budget, and you have a budget that is easier to stick to because you have an, a knowing every single day what your spending decisions mean to your future financial goals. Um, and, it's, and it stays clear of major financial pitfalls. So it, it helps you uh, plan accordingly for financial pitfalls by incorporating your savings needs like an emergency reserve and saving to your 401k uh, and saving for any of those other goals like a kid's college or a, uh, a new home that may be in the future. So it helps you steer clear of some of the major financial pitfalls that, that tend to come about. So let's let's take a step back and say, all right, you know, you've given. There, we've talked a lot about, you know, well, I have to go through and calculate all of my, you know, larger expenses. I have to, uh, you know, better understand how much I need to have saved for all these financial goals. And some people may say, well, I don't quite know how to do all of that right now. And I want just a back of the napkin approach that I can go home and say, all right, here's my budget that I can stick to, and this is what I'm gonna do right now to put myself in a better financial situation and create very simple, uh, a simple takeaway. And the simple takeaway here is how do we calculate first the savings number that is part of the equation, and then also how much we should be living on of our salary. So we utilize a, a, uh, a simple, um, TSL, taxes, savings of life, a simple approach that allows people to better understand on their gross income, how much they should be paying towards taxes, how much they should be putting away towards savings, and then how much they should be able to live on, which includes mortgage and rent and all that such. And so this is a pie chart that shows you that we think that you should be able to put 20% of your gross income towards savings, 30% should go towards taxes, and then 50% of your gross income should go towards life. So that right away gives us a clear definition of what that savings number we should be targeting to meet financial goals. If we're able to target 20% of savings, then you don't necessarily need to worry about all of the specific savings targets for each financial goal because 20% of savings will allow for you to meet all those financial goals over a longer period of time. And then your life is 50%. So that's what you should start to focus on trying to live by every single month is to live off of that 50% um, allocation of your gross income every single month. So that's a starting point if you want to go in and calculate without having to go look at past six months. And now if you're at the if you're the person that says, you know what, I don't want to do any calculation, just tell me a number for me to live by, and that will be a good starting point for me. And that's where we look at the average daily spend in the US is $91. So that means for the financially responsible, this person that lives by the TSL lifestyle, taxes, savings, and life, 20% going towards savings, 30% towards taxes, and living off of 50%, that means that this individual is, uh, is making about $67,000. What that, so if you are making 50,000, it gives you a base to go from, baseline to go from, and if you're making more than $67,000, it gives you a baseline to increase it from. But at least an individual that you can see that this person is spending $91 a month, uh, or a day on their daily spending, and that allows for them to live within that 50% of life for the TSL uh, lifestyle. Let's go on to the next slide here. So the key takeaways here that, that I would, before I go and jump into some of the questions that people have are, one, that you wanna keep it simple. So that's the reason that I would, I would strongly suggest focusing on the TSL uh, mentality of taxes, savings, and life, and starting the approach of spending you know, that average of $91 a day or whatever it may be relative to your particular salary based off of that baseline that we showed on that last slide. Because if we can keep it simple, at least we are starting to become more aware. Just set a number to start with. This is how we started it, as our, and me and my wife started it. This is how our team has started it, is you just set a baseline and you learn and you adjust over time. But what setting a baseline and keeping it simple allows for is that you start gaining a better understanding and awareness of those spending decisions. And that allows for you to start feeling confident that you truly can stick to a budget. So keep it simple as first. Stay consistent is the next takeaway. And consistency means 
always go back to that daily spend limit. If we can stay consistent with that number and have that be our number, and instead of trying to say, well, today I can spend 150 and then tomorrow uh, I'll, my daily spend limit will be 50 and then the next day it'll be 200, we wanna make sure that we just keep a simple daily spend limit for every day so that we stay true to that uh, number and we stay consistent with that number itself. Define your goals. Understand before you set a daily spend limit, what are your savings goals that you're trying to go for? Is it to retire at 55 or 60 or 65? Is it to buy a new house at, um, you know, in three years or five years? And which of those goals takes precedent for you? Because there's only a certain amount of income that comes in and we already have a defined number of fixed expenses in our life that we know are going out. So the cash flow number that we're left with is very, very much defined uh, already. And so we have, we only can split it a certain number of ways. And in order for us to meet certain goals faster, we can only put uh, that cash flow towards those particular goals. The other way to increase that is that we decrease our fixed expenses or we increase our, our income. But the thing that we can control, so controlling the controllables is how much we spend and how much we save uh, on individuals. The, the ability of, in, of controlling our income is not necessarily the most controllable of controllables. So when you're looking at your budget and looking at what you wanna save for, identify what is most important to you, identify what it is your cash flow allows for, and then focus on putting your savings towards that. Track your progress. It always is motivating to individuals to see that they're making success, and that's why the daily spend limit came about, was to allow people to understand, all right, well, I hit it today and I feel successful. I can go to bed tonight knowing that my habits and my decisions today positively or negatively impacted my my financial future and I know exactly how. I don't have to wait till the end of the month to see if I'm on track or not. I know that tomorrow I can go and, and continue to live the style that I want. Or if I didn't meet my daily spend limit, I know that tomorrow I need to make some better decisions. I need to take my lunch or I need to you know not eat out for lunch or dinner or whatever it may be. I know exactly what I need to do uh, because I've been able to track my progress and it's very simple to track your progress. And the final thing is to stay positive. Is that you know some months you may hit it some months you may not be able to fully accomplish it, but if you stay true and positive to it and you are able to see some of those small wins, that's gonna create a motivation for you. Uh, what, what we identified as we talked with individuals and we talked with groups with about regular budgeting was that uh, they got, they, it got so intimidating for them to do that they lost motivation, they weren't able to stay positive, and the mentality that you have about it is really uh, what motivates someone to stick true to a budget uh, for themselves. So. That is a, a quick rundown of daily spend limit, which is, in our belief, a budget that you can actually stick to, that you can actually understand, and that you can really take with you no matter how your life evolves and changes. And then if you want to learn more, you can go to uh, getwella.com where we talk about the daily spend limit and, and, and goal setting and planning as well uh, for each individual situation as each individual situation can be different. So again, thank you very much for your time and for the opportunity to speak with y'all. Y'all have a great rest of the day.